Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, God is manifesting his life in you. Now, as you listen to these teachings, I pray that the Spirit of God will build you up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demands for our daily bread? Are you ready? Ready, ready, ready. Praise God. Expect a miracle. I'm expecting a miracle today. I don't know about you, but I encourage you to expect a miracle today. Praise God. Join me in faith as we declare, say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Oh, glory. Listen, listen. Jesus asked us to make this demand. And remember, he said, I was telling you yesterday about the importance of what Jesus said. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. And why will I do it? He said that the Father will be glorified in the Son. Wow. Praise <laughs> God. Think about it. So, now we're talking about Jesus being the true light. And our text scripture is from John chapter 8 and verse 12. Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. I explained that to you last week, so important. He says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Simply put, anyone who doesn't follow me is walking in darkness. And you don't want to walk in darkness. Now, what he has said, it's something we must sit down, meditate on, and understand also. Because we we read these things and we don't really pause to think, what's he really saying? Why did Jesus boldly say, I am the light of the world? Why did he boldly say, anyone who follows me will not walk in darkness? Why did he say it? Hey, it's simply the truth. (laughs) Praise God. That's what I was telling you yesterday. Study what Jesus said in the book of John. Study it. Study it. There are many things Jesus said that were heavy. Most of it, the church have not even considered a quarter. I'm telling you the truth. We have not considered a quarter of the things that Jesus said. (laughs) Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, You remember, for example, when Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead. Now, they had told him that your friend Lazarus is sick because they felt, oh, it's Jesus. If we send him a message, he would pray. He would come over and Lazarus would be well. But then when they brought the message to Jesus, Jesus said to them, like, look, this sickness is not unto death. Said, okay, thank God he is not going to die. But you know the story, Lazarus died. And after Lazarus died, the Bible tells us that he waited for four days. And then he now went to visit them. And when he got there, oh there, I I think we should see this. It's important you see this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, John chapter 11 and verse 14. Then Jesus said to them plainly, 
Now, before now, he's been trying to get them to understand that they need to go see Lazarus. And they're like, why are we going to see Lazarus? We have a lot of work to do. say Lazarus is sleeping. And if he's sleeping, he'll wake up now. So like Jesus now, look at verse 14. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Look at what the disciples said. Then Thomas, who is also called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. You know, you know, I'm sure he spoke this um, in a cynical manner. Oh, yeah, let's go now. So we'll all go and die with him. Say he's dead. We'll go and die with him. Praise God. Now, but then here's the point we're going to. Mm. I want us to read from verse 21. Verse 20, verse 20. Now, Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I want you to look at this statement. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Now, those were the words of Martha. If you were here, our brother wouldn't have died. We know you would have done something. And then she went on to say, but even now, I know that whatever you ask God, he is going to give it to you. And look at what Jesus said. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you go to Jesus, you better be careful what you say, because what you're going to receive from him might be a shocker. Now, watch, watch this. Jesus said to her, in response to what she said, your brother will rise again. <laughs> Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Oh yeah, Martha has been following the teachings of Jesus carefully. But then she has not heard this part before. Praise God. Oh, I love this. So Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Yeah, encouraging words. He should have lived. See that now? He should have lived. But then, this is what Jesus will say. Because he's told us, resurrection day is coming. Or when all dead people will rise again. You know, So it's like, yeah, I know. He will rise on the resurrection day. Praise God. Now look at what Jesus said. So she was referring to the last day's resurrection. Jesus said to her, I want you to take note of this. This is one scripture the church have not scratched yet. We have not even looked at this scripture yet. We haven't. No, we haven't. We haven't. If we do, we will change. Something will change about us. If we look at this scripture. Now look at it. Jesus said to her, this lady just said, I know my brother will rise on the day of resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, who's speaking? The light of the world. The light of the world. Meaning, what he's about to say now, it's supposed to give light to the world, right? So, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Okay. Lazarus is dead. So Jesus is giving that assurance that he will live. When? We don't know for now. As at that time he was speaking. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. <laughs> then he turned to Martha and said, do you believe this? I love Jesus. You know what Jesus was doing? Mm. While Jesus was bringing the comforting words of truth concerning Lazarus, he was also bringing some deep truths to matter. You, don't, you didn't get that. Now, here's Jesus standing before matter. She was telling him all the, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died story, you know. And Jesus said to her, your brother will live again. Yeah, on the resurrection. Jesus said, hold on. I am the resurrection. That resurrection you're waiting for that day, I am the one. 
and I'm here now. I'm here now, <laughs> praise God. I am the resurrection and the life. Then he says, anyone who believes in me, even though he dies like your brother just did, be rest assured he will live again. And those who believe in me and are living like you, Martha, <laughs> will never die. Now, he had to ask her that question. Do you believe this? <laughs> it's God. Ooh, look at what Martha said. Now, now, that was a direct question. Do you believe this? Look at what Martha said. She said to him, Lord, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Now, now that's not what Jesus was asking. Jesus was saying, do you believe what I just told you? What did he just tell her? That anyone who is alive and believes in him will never die. Now, you that is listening to me, I ask you the same question like Jesus asked Martha. Do you believe him? Now, now I, I bet you this is a very... Now, we, we, we look at this statement and want to clothe it with darkness. Now, I'm telling you the truth. Most people have looked at this statement and they want to clothe it with darkness. What do you mean clothing, clothing with darkness? Yeah, you begin to say, no, Jesus meant spiritual death. If you believe in him, you will not die spiritually. That's what Jesus meant. Okay, hold on. Somebody has died physically, not spiritually. Or else you want to start telling us that no, Lazarus' death was not sp physical. It was a spiritual condition that Lazarus was in for four days. Hey, praise God. Now listen, listen. Lazarus just died physically. And here's Jesus saying to his sister, your brother will rise again. And then he went further to explain that I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even though he dies. Now, the subject matter they were talking about was a dead man. And Jesus is saying, even though he dies, he will rise again. And then he went on further to say, anyone who is alive and believe that is not dead yet, he couldn't have been talking about spiritual death. He was talking about physical death. So he said, the one who believes in me and dies for whatever reason, the rest assured he will live again. Now the one who's alive, not dead yet, and believes in me, will never die. What could Jesus have been saying? How could someone think he was referring to spiritual death? Because, hey, what followed after this was that Jesus went ahead and raised Lazarus from the dead. He called him out of that tomb. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came back alive. You know the story. So he couldn't have been talking about spiritual death. He was talking about physical death. So if anyone believes in Jesus, even if he dies physically, there is a sure word that he will be raised. And the one who is alive just like you and I now, and we believe in Jesus, Jesus is saying we will never die. So I ask you, do you believe Jesus? Who is speaking? The light of the world. I told you the world is full of darkness. Now this is light that is speaking. And what's going on? A lot of listening to me now, some of you will be saying, no, Pastor Tubo, I think you're, you're not getting this right. I think uh, Jesus wasn't, most, I don't think he was referring to physical death. Hey, he was. Wake up. 
We are the ones that are supposed to wake up to what he said. He is not supposed to speak to suit our emotions. He is not supposed to speak to suit our spiritual condition. We are the ones that are supposed to wake up. And that's what the church needs to do. Wake up and believe Jesus. What did he mean? Wake up and believe him. Did Jesus say, if I'm alive like I am right now, and I believe in him, I will not see death. Yes, he said so. Okay, so why are Christians dying? I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. But it doesn't negate the promise that Jesus made. Now, what are we supposed to do? Oh, did I say I don't know why people die? I'll tell you why they die. They die of unbelief. Ah, what do you mean? Great ministers of God, great... Unbelief is unbelief, brothers and sisters. Even if you believe 120 times and your unbelief is just 0.001% consigning one matter, you won't see life in that area. So we can believe in healing the sick. We can believe in raising the dead. We can believe in all manner of supernatural things. But if it is difficult for us to believe that we are not supposed to die, then unbelief has set in. Mm. Yeah. Lights is telling us something. Ah, no, 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 no. We want to clothe it with darkness. Instead of allowing the lights to expose every darkness that is in our hearts that that's what you do with the light you allow it flow inside you and flush out every darkness many of us still carry darkness in our hearts the darkness of unbelief unbelief in itself is the belief in darkness so when we say someone is walking in unbelief is simply saying that he has believed something else which is darkness Listen, brothers and sisters, we need to wake up and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the only way we can be assured that we are walking in the light. And our time is up. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you will rise and walk in the light let your heart be filled with his light in jesus mighty name amen i'll see you tomorrow god bless you bye bye